So, welcome to Charlie Brown's kitchen. And yes, Charlie Brown is standing right underneath the camera. I think he knows we're preparing his famous or his most loved treat. Um, he likes these delectable squeeze ups, squeeze ups, and these little gravies. But I wanted to show you made in bowls. Okay, I think. This is a set of uh, made-in bowls, and they come in four different sizes. This is 35 ounce, I think this is 22 ounce, and it goes all the way down to a two ounce. And Charlie Brown likes these two ounce bowls, as we'll demonstrate. Mainly, they exactly hold his snack, his uh, gravy and delectable snack. So here's Charlie Brown's favorite snack food. He's got his little gravy in his uh, small two ounce made in bowl. I think this is a 1.6 ounce pack of gravy. And here's his delectables squeeze treat in uh, his other little bowl. So we're gonna show you how much Charlie likes this. So Charlie's used to me placing his treats by his normal feeding station. But uh, you can see he likes his delectables. What do you think, dude? He normally has like his creamy meaty bits first and then his soup second. That good stuff dude? Yeah, you gonna pose for the camera? Yeah. Yep, he's all business when his tongue is happy. He does literally clean those bowls. Now he's got to check out his surroundings. He's normally not allowed up on the uh, kitchen sink area here, but since Susie is out of town, of course she may see this eventually, he's allowed up to join me. So welcome to Charlie Brown's Kitchen. It's Monday, 15 April, 2024. It's tax day. For those of you who've not done so, you're supposed to have your taxes done by, by I think midnight or whatever in the post office. I did my taxes like two months ago, so I've been long done. Anyway, welcome to tax day in Charlie Brown's kitchen. And we're gonna start with old and new food processor. These two units basically do the same thing. But this one is a 45 year old General Electric food processor. Um, I think General Electric still makes food processors, but they look nothing like this one. You can see the plastic is kind of yellowing a little bit. And you can see this one's a brand new Cuisinart uh, 14 cup. Uh, I think they call it a custom food processor. Okay. Um, this one just arrived in Charlie's kitchen yesterday and this one has been here for 45 years. They both work. Okay, they're both fully functional and we'll give them a side-by-side -side demonstration here. 
But first thing is to let you hear the noise factor. But these are the, by the way, these are the blades, the chopping blades on the bottom of the unit. This one's for the Cuisinart. This one's for the old GE. So you can see the size and kind of the technology difference in blades from 45 years ago. <clears throat> Get those safely out of the picture. And now, hear this. That's the old GE. And that's the new Cuisinart. They both basically have the same setup that we're going to be using for slicing some potatoes. The old GE. And the new Cuisinart. So you can see there's definitely a difference with them. And you can see the uh, GE one has got a smaller food bowl here than the Cuisinart. So our demonstration today is going to be done with some Amazon Fresh gold potatoes, or basically the Yukon Golds or Russet kind of whatever Amazon calls gold potatoes. Okay, and we're going to be making potato chips, and later on we're going to be making a very simple bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich, and we'll get into that. So we're going to start with the old 45-year-old General Electric food processor. We'll put our potato in the feed tube. We got our uh, feed cup. And there you go. Now we've got our new Cuisinart food processor. And this one actually has a larger feed tube. And the uh, feed cup actually has a safety, so this safety has to be engaged back here for the processor to work. See, I engage it without the safety, nothing happens. Looks like you have to go, there you go, safety's engaged. And that was really fast. So. This is the old GE food processor blade and bowl. This is the new Cuisinart blade that we just used. Okay. You can see the old GE did some potato slices. We are going to fry these up to make like potato chips. But you can see how the new Cuisinart actually did a superior job of making potato chips or potato slices. We're going to turn these into potato chips. Okay, so here's the old food processor 45 years ago and here's today's. So since we're making a bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich, here is the star of the sandwich, the bacon. And I've got uh, the thick cut Thick cut hardwood smoked bacon. And uh, you can see how thick these slices are. We'll use six slices. So I'm going to cut these bacon slices basically in half. So we started six and now we got 12 bacon pieces. The uh, bacon hole is actually a little bit long and awkward to deal with in the pan. So I'm cutting it half, cutting them in half to make it less awkward to uh, fry up in the pan. So we're going to fry up our bacon in our made in cast iron pot here. We'll put the bacon in. Okay. 
and let the bacon get going. So we'll check up on our bacon here. Yeah, these pots do get warm. Always best to use a pot holder. So we're going to take the uh, bacon out and put it on some paper towels. Now we are going to use this bacon grease to make our potato chips, the ones we just let the food processors process. So we're going to reuse this same pot with all the uh, bacon goodness in there. The paper towels out of here. There's our bacon. So we are going to uh, and this time use some canola oil, but I've got some other fryer oil coming on order here. But since this is here, sitting around, we'll use it. So we're going to put that in the pot here. Let it heat up. So we are going to put up our food processed potatoes in there, our potato chips, and let the let these cook. This will take a few minutes, maybe five or ten minutes, I don't know. It's up to the potatoes now. So let's have a look at how our potatoes are doing. They're looking pretty good. I think they're uh, pretty much done. So I'm turning the heat off. So I've got a bowl here, strainer type bowl with uh, some paper towels in for the grease to catch it. But you can see the bowl is sitting in another bowl. So if the grease passes through, it's going to be cut. And this is actually my dumpling spatula, but uh, it turns out it works great for making these kind of fries. So these fries have to cool. Yeah, I know, it's probably best if you had a flat, big flat thing and laid all these things out individually, but this is also a reality kitchen. In reality, you do this. So when the oil cools down to a reasonable temperature, I am going to store it for reuse later 
in a grease can with strainer okay that we have here and this is the grease can with strainer and it's got a lid that goes on top of there so you can store your fry grease and reuse it so of course if we're making a bacon lettuce and tomato sandwich we need a tomato and I've got one of my made-in serrated knives it's actually thin like a boning knife but it works great on tomatoes and fruits and veggies and stuff you can see how clean a cut this knife makes so now we need to make some tomato slices for my sandwich So there, we've got some tomato. So the third element in the bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich, of course, is lettuce. Okay. Now, truth be told, I made a bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich the other day. So this is the second round, or the second, second half here. So I, it was quite good. I mean, I like bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich. And these homemade ones with the homemade bacon and everything are just out of the world. Yeah, I know. It's a simple sandwich, but this is a really good sandwich. So I've got some Kerrygold Irish butter imported. And this is like a soft butter. I've got my uh, sandwich rolls or bread here. So this is like a submarine sandwich BLT. And what I'm going to do is put some of the Kerrygold butter on the bread. Now, the thing I like about the way I kind of cook or bake or make stuff is I actually like the fact that it never really turns out the same. So each time I make this, it's a little bit different. Butter in the sandwich here. We can put our tomato in. Okay. Now we could season the tomato. I like pepper, so I'm going to put some pepper, just a little bit of salt. And we'll get the main ingredient here, the bacon. You can see the bacon has turned out rather nice. Smells great. You don't even have to eat it. You can just sniff this bacon. The smell is fantastic. So, we'll put the bacon on our sandwich there. Then, of course, we've got some lettuce. This is fresh, crisp lettuce. You can kind of hear it, how crisp it is. It's very fresh. And of course, the thing about my sandwiches is they tend to be king size. So let's cut these in half. It's 
like I need a toothpick to hold them together or something. But these are very yummy. Fresh bacon, tomato, fresh tomato, fresh lettuce. This is good. Bacon's trying to escape. But oh yeah, such a simple but yet very good sandwich. So no, we haven't forgotten about our homemade potato chips. They're still kind of drying out here. Oh. These also, the homemade fried potatoes. I mean, this is really good. Such a simple thing to do. Just slice up a potato, put it in some oil. I can sit here and eat these all day. Of course I shouldn't. So I'm going to put my used oil grease. It's well flavored into my uh, grease can with a built-in strainer. Yeah, this will clean up. Pretty simple. But you can see the strainer works and I've got oil to use next time. And it's got a lid. There you go.